Uh, almost 140. Uh, yours sincerely, Alan. Thank you very much indeed for that. I enjoyed a couple of the good emails this morning. Right, the UK's booming housing market helped retail sales pick up as consumers splash the cash on household goods. Numbers from the British Retail Consortium showed spending rose 5.7% in April on an annual basis. Speaking to us now in Abu Dhabi is Noor Al Hamri, who is the market strategist at ADS Securities. Very good day to you. Look, um, I was looking at your comments about the Bank of England using the currency rate uh, to douse uh, any inflation concerns as well. A bit of benign neglect going on from the Bank of England. Where do we start worrying? about the level of sterling, both on Eurocross and indeed against on cable. Yeah, well, good morning again. Welcome to ADS Abu Dhabi. Uh, basically, right now, what we are seeing is not worrying the bank. A few uh, months ago, Mark Carney was saying that rising uh, cable or rising uh, sterling will hurt growth and, and exports. But basically, so far, we, we haven't seen that much data or that much worse than expected data, at least in trade balance and also for the growth. Came in at 0.8%. We will start worrying if we crossed above maybe 1.72%. And don't forget that the inflation factor or uh, for the sterling of the inflation in the UK is basically around 0. 3%. So uh, we, will, we might be start worrying if we crossed above 172, maybe 173. So far, they are controlling it, or, or as far as the inflation goes down, or will continue to decline it through rising exchange rate. I don't think so that there's going to be any change in the policy. And this is what we are waiting to see from the Bank of England this week during the inflation report. Um, it's fascinating, isn't it, how the market has repriced the sterling curve. And um, we're now looking at a move first, I think, in the first quarter of 2015. But um, I read a commentary um, by Neil Woodford, who is uh, obviously a, a notable fund manager. He seems to think that the UK economy couldn't withstand uh, more than a couple of interest rate rises because we still have excess debt. Um, do you think that um, by excessively focusing on the inflation story, we are missing the underlying, underlying risks in the UK, which is we just don't have um, sustainable debt levels at this point. It is not only in the UK, it's globally. If we have a look at the US and Canada and Australia also, and many other economies. If we are looking at raising rates again, we might do the same mistake of 2007. Basically, right now, mortgages are still higher, and all the bad loans are still higher as well. So basically, I don't think so that the, the, uh, the central banks will look at uh, raising rates so, uh, so fast in these, in these areas in, in the, at this time. They might continue to use the exchange rate for, uh, for, it, uh, for the time being, even in, in, even in, the, uh, in the Eurozone as well. Right now, we've, we've seen the ECB continue to say that we might act in, in June, while uh, it should, I, we believe that it shouldn't be done a, a long time ago, maybe in January or February, because continued declining, so we've seen to 0.5% and then up to 0.7 inflation rate in the Eurozone. But right now, we have a potential, or maybe may, uh, they, may, uh, they, may, uh, they may intervene in, in June. But the, the question is, would it be enough to cutting the rates by 0 0.20 uh, or to 0.10%? In the UK, we're still, still seeing some uh, stabilization, broader economic right. recovery. But of course, as you said, the debt continues to be the concern for the next for the next year, at least. Right. And 172 on your radar for cable. But let me ask you about dollar directly, because I noted the one week high that we've got on dollar yen rates. But it feels as though you might be playing the opposite side of this trade because you don't believe in some of the dollar strength justified by the U.S. economy. Well, yes, exactly. Well, the U.S. the U.S. dollar will continue to go down further, at, at least against some major currencies, not all of them. If we went to 140, let's say in the euro, it doesn't mean that the dollar will crash against the yen or any other currencies, or let's say the Swiss, the Swiss franc and the dollar yen. We don't believe that the bad weather is the only thing. The deterioration came in in the U.S. economy for the first quarter. Right now, we've seen uh, some of the central banks or some of the major banks revise their their uh, forecast for the second estimation of the GDP to minus 0.8 percent. Right now, Janet Yellen continues to hold the 10-year yields below 3%, which will continue to, uh, to pressure the dollar over the, over the next uh, three months. But the next few weeks is going to be very significant because further deterioration might change uh, the right, Federal now. Reserve policy and might force the Fed Noor. to pause QE. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed for us, uh, joining us. Noor Al-Hamri joining us out of Abu Dhabi. Right, our guest host today, Paul Donovan, Global Economist at UBS.